there is obviously a certain benefit for the U.S. consumer, which uses crude, but the U.S. economy, would you say, is a net benefactor from crude oil at this point? So falling crude oil prices, I mean, I don't even know if that helps us so much. Yeah, I mean, it's done a lot. That's, there's no two ways about it. Tons of great paying jobs, tons of big industry, tons of uh, multiplier effect jobs from the pipelines and the, the ports now that we built. But I will always remind myself that this is still a two-thirds consumer economy. So in a way, it still is good news because people have more discretionary income to spend. If they'll go out and leave their house to spend it, if this thing keeps spreading, then we get that. that, that we don't even get that positive effect with the economy. Well, that, and that's a good point. We should also make clear there's a difference between the direction it's going and the level that it's at. So it's one thing if it's falling from 100. You know, of course, that would be $100 a barrel. Once we're already down at 50, I mean, what's the kind of danger zone, so to speak, where in those energy producing uh, places, which have been under a lot of pressure for the last couple of years now, this starts to really mean shutdowns and possibly layoffs. $50. This is it. This is the line in the sand. This is where they really start to hurt. This is where they start to not be able to uh, service their debt. This is where the expense ratio does not work for, for Wall Street, for private equity, for anybody. Uh, you've seen on the chart going back several years now, $50 has always been sort of the, the savior point. We've tested below it any number of times, but we keep getting back above it. And maybe, Brian, I mean, we're not, you know, we're not totally down there yet, but obviously it's been a really ugly start to the year, probably the worst way the year could have started for anybody in the energy sector who hoped they might finally see a reprieve. I was in Galveston on Friday night. Mm. I was hanging out with people from Houston and in the oil and gas business. It's getting grim because you've got $87 billion in debt that is due between now and 2024. 61% of that is speculative, is junk. The bonds of Chesapeake Energy and Devon Energy and a few others they're at 50 and 60 cents. These are once eight and $10 billion companies. You have really hundreds of companies in this space, which are public and private, we don't talk about the private ones, struggling to meet their debt obligations. I've said it before, Kelly, oil is a four letter word and it's spelled D-E-B-T. And this is really the last thing that an industry that is already sort of crushing under the weight of debt needs. Once again, worst performing sector, down four and a half percent right now, the debt-heavy companies like Oasis and others are down 10% right now. Yeah. 10%. And it's